Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you know, I'm doing my LS3 swap. So today I'll be focusing on reinforcing the rear of my E46. And since the E46s are known to crack in the rear subframe mounting points, today I'm gonna show you a package that I got called the Vince Bar. We heard about it through the E46 forums. Um, and we heard very good things about it. So today we have a prototype. It just came out and we're gonna install it in the car basically. So if you see that you like this kit, um, he would hopefully have them in production by the end of the month. And then I'll be able to give you more information on how you can purchase it. Um, but let's go ahead and show you what's in the kit and then we can move on from there. All right, here's a general overview of what's included in the kit. Um, I'm not sure what those are. I'm pretty sure that's just candy, but um, yes, this is shipped from Sweden. Um, but however, it did not take very long to get here. Um, as we can see, he almost provides everything. We do have to buy a riveter um, and probably more epoxy. But yeah, here's just a general overview. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So some things that I forgot to mention is that this kit uh, does not require any welding, just epoxy and uh, rivets. So, however, if you do prefer welding it in, he does have another kit with that option. And another thing is that you can still pair the traditional reinforcement plates with this kit. Um, he actually also sells those if you're interested. So the first step in doing this is uh, I'm going to remove everything from the trunk. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. That includes all the carpeting, all this down here. All right, that's everything that needs to be taken out of the trunk. Now let's move on to inside the car uh, where I need to remove the back seat. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take off these seat belts and these hinges here uh, and then I can take out this sound deadening. Okay, so now I finished taking the seat belts off. Now I'll remove the sound ending that's right here that goes all the way across. Damn, this reminds me of big pieces of chocolate right now. <laughs> Alright, so I took off this much. Uh, might need to take off a little bit more later, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so moving on to the trunk. Um, we already marked where I need to draw a line so I'm able to cut. So all these marks are two and a quarter. And then here on the edge is three centimeters three centimeters so now I'm gonna draw a line 
uh, to connecting all the dots and then drawing a line all the way right here and then I'll be able to cut this part. Well, that's what we didn't want to cut. Yes. That's why I told you to use that over here. Otherwise, I would have cut it for sure. Yep. Bam. It's out. Yep. We're going to need some of these pieces, so. Oh. Alright, so we're done cutting. So, the reason we cut with the small cutter at first was because we do not want to damage this back part here but as you saw then he went ahead and did use the big cutter to cut um, the sides since the metal is a little bit tougher now we're going to try on the bar and see what happens right, try it on So this whole thing needs to be cut out some more. As you can see, it's all crooked right here. So we'll cut that out. Then we need to put a little slot through here and see if we can beat it down. If not, we're gonna have to flatten it with the grinder. Same with all these weld beads right here. There's three of them on each side. So we got to grind all that down, clean everything up, clean all the paint off of this and try to get this as smooth as possible. Get all the paint off of there. Same on both sides because that's what this attaches to. Once we have all that out and the bar can actually sit flat, then we'll start marking all the holes for the rivets. We're also gonna drill and tap these right in the center where it actually goes to the subframe. We're gonna drill and tap both of those and get this bar to set in. There's holes for bolts to go through and we're just gonna use a M12 tap so we could put like a, a normal lug, like a wheel bolt. It's the same size as M12 by 1.5, I believe and I'll just secure it down in there and we'll let the epoxy dry rivet everything together as well and then it should be solid so like we said earlier this is an epoxy and rivet style kit they do make a weld style one as well where you can weld it in we went with this style because it's more DIY friendly and it, we'll see how, how well it holds up mm -hmm. alright Jason cut the rest of it and now we're gonna try it again Still not that. Hmm. All right, so we have to flatten these ridges right here because they're standing up yep. and this has to sit flat on it yeah they told us to use a hammer and um well it's not it's really flat. going too well yeah it's flying out the whole thing it's like it's pushing that whole section down but we don't want that we just want to flatten the ridge and then we still have to grind down these weld beads so you grind those down too hmm so why to just grind it down
Alright, I'll grind it down. Yep. Are these rusty? Yes. How? Set. Go. There we go. Perfect. Now, Lush. Yep. Now we gotta drill a hole through this and on that one as well. Tap it. Drill all these holes all around. Epoxy, rivet, bam. Bam. And then ultimately we're all, we'll probably also have some kind of bar that goes from this shock tower to that one. And we'll see if we could tie in this support bar as well to it. I think there's a, there's a bar called the Mason Engineering Bar that does that. And I think we'll probably get something like that. Or we'll make it so that way it's even more stiff back here. Less problems with the suffering. I, I think this is actually going to be really good. I think because this guy, uh, Vince Bar, I'm guessing his name is Vince. He's done a lot of research with it. I mean, he's got a bunch of these floors cut out. And he actually looked at all the stress points. And he actually, like, you know, put some thought and research into it. So, I think this should work. But we'll find out. Alright, so let me just tell you guys that we messed up a little bit. So, as you saw, I wasn't sitting in properly, so we thought it was a section down here. So we did cut a little bit more, um, but we weren't supposed to. So the main reason why it was not sitting in properly was because we did not cut enough down here. As you can see, we have to cut out that slit right there. And we just didn't do it far enough, so that's why it was not sitting. But it's okay, it's not a big deal that we cut a little bit more than we should. But just stick to the measurements that we talked about at the beginning of the video. But now I also marked where we need to drill and tap here and here as you can see that uh, black dot all right so where we had that t underneath that t is the receiver for the subframe bolt so the subframe bolt on the back side there's two mounts on the back there's two big 18 millimeter bolts and they go from that subframe into the body right here and there's already a threaded technically it's a nut that's in there so what we did was when we flattened this down and we put this bar on top and on this hole on the bar, this hole lands directly on top of where that should be. So all you need to do is line up the bar and through that hole mark it and then drill out that section. So it should be where this T section meets and once you start drilling it, you should run into that threaded hole. We already have the subframe off. If you don't have your subframe off, you need to take the bolts out at the very least so that way you don't start drilling into the bolt. So what we ended up doing was since the subframe's already out, the bolt's already out, I just use this step drill uh, that allows me to just take off that top layer without really messing up a lot of the threads. So we got that top layer off and I did still mess up a few threads but in the kit he also includes a tap that is the right size for that. So I just ran that tap through there once and it's all good to go. So this side I haven't tapped it yet but I did use the step bit and got the hole right over that receiver and now I'm going to tap it so you guys can see how that looks. Alright, so here's the tap. It's an M12 by 1.5 tap. So we're going to put it right above that hole. And it should drop right in. And we're going to use a lubricating oil. And then a T-tap wrench. So this right here is the wrench that you're supposed to use with a tap, but there's not enough space because it keeps hitting that chassis row, the chassis leg. So I'm just gonna use the open end wrench. This is not really safe because it might not go in 100% how it should, like straight. But since most of the threads are still fine, I'm just gonna go ahead and risk it. So now with the tap ran all the way through, we can use a wheel bolt, a wheel lug, which is the M12 by 1.5. And you, all you need is two of these. This is what we're gonna be using to secure uh, the actual bar to the entire chassis as well, while we're getting the epoxy and all that set in. So I'm just gonna run this through. Uh, you can put some lubricant on it, so like some penetrating oil or something like that. 
and make sure the threads are already cleaned out on the bolt as well as inside where we ran the tap through. And we're good. All right, so now all that's left is to get all the paint and undercoating off of most of this area, as well as the chassis legs, get all this seam sealer, and um, deburr all these edges as well. Get all that grinded down, get all the paint exposed. We, we don't want any painted surfaces left, so that way this bar has something proper to bond to, since we're gonna be using epoxy. Here's an update. Um, so now that this is prepared, uh, you have to cut a. Ideally, you you want to drill a hole at the end of each slit that we created, so that the crack doesn't continue on if something were to happen. But since this metal is hollow underneath, this is basically just sheet metal. As you can see, we kind of messed up right here. It basically just fell through. But now the next step will be to put this plate. right here so we're gonna uh, rivet it and epoxy once the bar is in place and everything's done I will go the extra step and put structural foam through these holes so that there's no hollow space underneath uh, this all right now we're gonna move on to the front mounts inside inside the car so next step is to drill out these spot welds uh, from this bracket and this bracket and you want to be careful when doing these because you will need to reuse these brackets since they hold the seat in place I'm actually going to let Jason do this so I don't mess anything up. Okay, stop moving. Bruh. Oh my gosh. All right, so we got the first little bracket off. We kind of butchered it a little bit. I tried to use a spot weld cutter bit to help out a little bit, but obviously it didn't work. And this metal is really, really thin. And we're actually gonna cut out that whole section with the hole saw. So we'll, we're gonna have to figure out a way to reuse that bracket. Otherwise, we'll just make one out of scratch and go from there. So this is just a normal step bit that I'm using. You can get these at Harbor Freight. They come in a pack of three and they actually work really, really well. A lot better than most other drill bits that Harbor Freight sells. Obviously you can use a better drill bit, but this works good with the impact driver a lot quicker for me. Now we gotta go from underneath and drill through the subframe mount itself. So since there's no subframe on here, we can just use a normal drill bit. We're gonna drill all the way through where that mount goes and just, it'll come out through this floor right here. And then we'll use that hole saw and cut out that entire section. Okay, now we're under the car and he's about to take off those. There we go. These are size 32 by the way. So I'm just using a fan clutch wrench for the E46. All right, so I'm just gonna use a small drill bit that fits through this hole, and we're gonna drill all the way through into the cabin. That way we can just get an idea of where it's gonna be. So you wanna try to be as close to the center as possible. through. Now let's do this one. 
We're through. All right, let's bring it down. All right, so obviously it didn't come through as far as I had hoped. So it's gonna be like right here. That's the general area. And we're gonna cut out this entire section so you can put a cup through. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But I need to get the drill, I need to get a hole through here so I can use a hole saw and use that guide that goes all the way through to the bottom of the car. All right, so this is a drill bit that is supplied with the kit if you get the tooling kit. And I'm sure that if you use this one, it'll come all the way through. But since that receiver is threaded, and this is the same size as the thread, it's the M12, uh, and this drill bit will pretty much just go through those entire threads. And I want to try to preserve the threads. There's no point because you're going to have a bolt that goes through that whole reinforcement plate. But I just want to be safe and I don't want to just keep retapping it. So that's why I used a smaller drill bit and just got that hole all the way through. And then once I got it all the way through, I just used this step bit and just drilled this hole right here. And I'm directly on top of that where that receiver for that subframe is. Go. I see it. I broke my drill bit. What? My drill bit broke. The drill bit? Yeah. So in there? Yeah, it's stuck in there. But it'll come out. Watch out. Wait. Oh, there's that drill bit. You see it? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. So you, you can, can see, see that it. hole through the other big hole. And that hole goes all the way down, and you can see it from inside the underneath the car. It's hard to explain, but you'll see the whole picture once we get that hole a little bit bigger. So this hole saw is actually included with the toolkit, as is this bar right here. This is more of a guide, so that way this will go into that hole that the subframe bolt goes through, and this hole saw will cut out this section right, right here, exactly above the hole, so we have it right where we need it to be. So all you gotta do to put it together is you loosen this up like that. And you can see these two pins pop out. Unscrew this. And then there's a hex. Uh, I believe it's a five millimeter hex. Loosen that bolt. It's like a set screw. Put this rod in, tighten the set screw. Get the hole saw above it. This is a two inch hole saw by the way. Tighten it down. And you can see there's four holes inside. And these two pins will go through the hole. Like that. And that locks everything in. All right, so the drill bit that I used before to drill that hole so you can see all the way through is not big enough to let this go all the way through. This one is a little bit bigger and it should let us go all the way through. All right, so you wanna use that supplied drill bit. This is the M12 one, uh, and run it through that hole all the way. That way you can fit this all the way through. From the bottom too? No, just from up here. You gotta run that drill bit just from the top once you have that pilot hole guided through. All right, so now that we have this hole cut out, this is what actually goes in place of that hole. So this is gonna fit right in. Once that fits in, you see there's still a gap here, so it still needs to go down a little bit. But we're gonna epoxy this whole section in, epoxy the bottom side of this in, and rivet all over around here. And that's just gonna strengthen that whole section up. And the bolt will actually come all the way through. There's gonna be a nut on top of this that the bolt attaches to. So that bolt's gonna go through the subframe, it's extended obviously, and then the nut goes on top of here. But before that, we still have to clean up this whole hole. There's weld beads right here. So we're gonna grind those weld beads down, 
and then uh, clean up all these edges, get all the sound deadening off of the sides, and then have this perfectly flush against this whole area. So we gotta do that on both sides and grind all this down, get all the paint off so we can epoxy everything as well. And just like the back mounts for the subframe, we're also gonna put structural foam all through this cavity as well, or at least try to. All right, so I guess now it's my job to do all that that he said to make these fit properly. Um, but for right now, I guess that's all for this video. Um, this basically includes all the prep work. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll be epoxying and riveting and all that. So make sure to stay tuned for video number two.